If you're loving this podcast, be sure to check out the full lineup. From news and local politics to sports and true crime, find your next great listen right now at DuluthNewsTribune.com slash podcasts. That's DuluthNewsTribune.com slash podcasts. Hello, Northlanders. It's Wednesday, June 26th. I'm Wyatt Buckner with the Duluth News Tribune Minute, presented by Minnesota Power Employees Credit Union. The average MPECU member saves over $785 a year in better rates and lower fees. And with MPECU, every ATM is your ATM. With their free checking program, you get ATM fee reimbursements at any ATM anywhere in the U.S. Check out Minnesota Power Employees Credit Union services online at mpecu.com or visit their offices in downtown Duluth, Arrowhead Road, or Miller Trunk Highway. Now here's look today's headlines. Local officials will have some hired help as they work to determine exactly how to spend the $36 million the city has set aside to invest in local athletic venues. Members of the Duluth City Council unanimously passed a resolution Monday night authorizing staff to hire RDG Planning and Design, headquartered in Des Moines, Iowa, to develop an action plan at a cost not to exceed $338,500. The finished document should be delivered by April 2025. Todd Fedora, who was appointed to chair Duluth's Indoor Athletic Venues Task Force in September, said it's an important step. He said task force members recommended the city partner with RDG after considering a nationwide field of consultants. The proceeds from an extended half percent tax on local restaurant, bar, and lodging revenues will be used to fund the investment in local athletic venues. The same revenue stream was previously the source of funding for recreational improvements to the St. Louis River Corridor under Mayors Don Ness and Emily Larson. Mayor Roger Reinert issued a statement Monday expressing his excitement about bringing RDG on board as the city prepares to gather community input before it issues requests for proposals. When Duluthian Helen Smith Stone started quilting, she didn't have a teacher. She had books, magazines, and a quilting program on what's now PBS North to help guide her through her first quilt. She made it while pregnant with her son, Lane, in 1979 out of recycled blue jeans and calico print cotton fabric squares. Now, 45 years after that first quilt, Smith Stone has spent much of her quilting career making sure she's a source for new quilters, and she continues to make quilts for her loved ones. Her dedication and growth in the quilting world is why Minnesota Quilters Incorporated recently named her the Minnesota Quilter of the Year. The award was established at the Minnesota Quilt Show in 1997. To qualify, the quilter needs to have been a Minnesota resident within the past five years, have a collection of personal and professional quilt work, significantly impact the quilt community, and have dedicated time and talent to preserve and promote quilting. Smith Stone has run a local quilting guild since 2001, taught numerous quilting classes, created several handmade quilts to charitable organizations, and has an extensive quilt collection she showed last week during the Minnesota Quilt Show at the Duluth Entertainment Convention Center. As for Smith Stone's next project, she's not quite sure yet. She's taking time to recover from the quilt show. For anyone looking to get into quilting, her main piece of advice is to find a class. A Facebook page pretending to be Minnesota Housing directed people to apply for non-existent housing and vouchers, potentially putting them at risk for identity theft, said the agency. In a Tuesday press release, Minnesota Housing announced it had been impersonated in a Facebook scam about waitlists for people seeking housing or Section 8 housing choice vouchers. The page has now been taken down. Perpetrators of the scam posed as the agency using alternate identities including Minnesota Housing Authority, and Minnesota Housing Development Authority, said Minnesota Housing. Those who followed the links on the pages were asked for personally identifiable information or directed to Minnesota Housing's St. Paul office to apply for non-existent vouchers and housing. Minnesota Housing does not manage housing wait lists and does not issue housing vouchers, the agency warned. Similar disinformation campaigns have targeted housing agencies, authorities, and organizations in multiple states in recent weeks, said Minnesota Housing. Now here's a look at your forecast, brought from the News Tribune's Northlandia podcast. Good morning, here's the forecast for the Duluth area today. Any lingering sprinkles quickly clear out this morning, leaving a partly sunny daytime for the region. Temperatures will be notably cooler than yesterday as well, with our afternoon highs stuck in the mid-60s for Wednesday. 
Overnight, we stay dry and quiet with partly cloudy skies and lows cooling back into the low 50s. Clouds will gradually be on the increase then later Thursday, with some rain approaching then late Thursday night. I'm Storm Tracker meteorologist Robert Daly. Thank you to the Northlandia podcast for their support. The bi weekly podcast explores curious and unique stories here in the Northland. The latest episode looks at scuba diving in Lake Orbegon. You can find that episode and others at DuluthNewsTribune.com or wherever you also get this podcast. Reporting for today's episode was done by Peter Passy, Terry Caddo, and the form of Fargo Moorhead. Thank you for listening to Duluth News Tribune Minute. Have a great day, and we'll see you back here tomorrow.